All right, so this next tip is gonna be having the BPM, rhythm, and groove of your drums and oftentimes other elements of your tune, if not all of them, be at the mercy of a nice drum break sample. So I've got this one right here. It's a pretty good authentic drum break sample. It's nice and warm, which I find is often a word that people use in place of shitty. So basically the idea here is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is unwarped and then change the BPM of the project until everything lines up and it looks right. So I'm just looking at where the kicks and the snares are. Uh, the snares being here, 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 and here. And I can see that the phrase ended there and that's four bars. So it's lined up nice and good. It doesn't need to be perfect right now because we'll worry about that later. But then let's say that you don't want to necessarily work at 87 beats per minute specifically. So the whole idea of this trick is yes, you are gonna be at the mercy for the most part of whatever the BPM rhythm or groove of whichever drum break sample you decide to use is at. But there's a little bit of flexibility here because I'm gonna use repitch. So if you're not already familiar, repitch basically works the same way that speeding up or slowing down a vinyl works and that when it's faster, it's gonna be at a higher pitch and when it's slower, it's gonna be at a lower pitch. So technically it's not even really warping it at all, unlike any of the other warp modes. So yes, we are at 87 beats per minute right now because that's what this sample is roughly at, give or take a few decimal points. But if we wanted to go with a different uh, BPM, give or take, I would say 10 or so, otherwise it's gonna to start to sound maybe a, a little uh, too computer music-y, maybe uh, just a different vibe, not necessarily what I'm talking about here. If you want it to sound convincingly like maybe the listener won't even necessarily be aware of the fact that the drums were pitched up or down essentially, um, then I would stay within you know a 10 or so BPM range. Um, so yeah, we're at 87 where it sounds like this. But let's try 80 maybe. Which it's even warmer here. Uh, it's even shittier here at 80. Um, or we could try 95. Both of those work. Honestly, I'm gonna go 80 because I've been feeling that vibe lately. And see, here's why we're using repitch, because I think that the knee-jerk reaction for most people when working with drums and warping them, uh, especially when you're actually changing the BPM or pitch of them, um, is to go with beats mode. But if I do that, I'm gonna hear like that that weird, like, I don't know how to sound like beats mode with my human mouth, um, but you're gonna hear that sort of, you know, uh, glitchy computer beat prison artifact not artifact but it's just the nature of this looping front and back i mean it all right here i'll say this it's pretty transparent beats mode it, it, uh, if you're not really f***ing up the bpm all that much from where it's supposed to be natively but here at 42 you start to hear that but yeah i'm gonna go back to 80 and i'm gonna go on repitch and then I'm gonna consolidate it. And now I'm gonna be using beats mode because now, since I had already warped it with repitch, essentially not affecting the fidelity of the audio because by changing the BPM with it warped in repitch, it also lowered the pitch accordingly, much in the exact same way that it would if you did that with a vinyl record, slowing it down. So now with beats mode, um, it was already pretty transparent when we just went from like 87 to 80 with beats mode. So now with me just making these tiny little adjustments here, I'm sure it will essentially be unnoticeable if I'm making any adjustments. I'm really just going to be making sure that like the kicks on the downbeats on the quarters, uh, quarter notes and the snares are just landing where they should. Um, other than that, I'm not going to be too worried about it right now. 
And now the next step is I'm going to be essentially limiting and reducing the dynamics of the drum break because I'm going to be layering it with my own kicks and snares, which as far as I'm concerned, when using a, an approach like this, my kicks and snares jobs are really going to be only to add punch and sort of just cut through the mix and make this drum break sound a little bit more beefy and just sort of give it a little bit more life and really just have the best of both worlds, like have this slap on a nice sound system, but also sound raw and authentic. So I don't really need these to be very dynamic. So I'm just gonna slap on an EQ and I'm going to put a high pass on there and just sort of get rid of whatever, you know, malarkey is hiding down there. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, I typically don't like to EQ samples if I really don't have to, um, but usually if there's a lot of boom and stuff going on down there, uh, I'll do it. Um, but I think that your main priority should be finding good samples instead of doing eh, bleh, oh i'm trying to make it sound good because it won't it's not going to make it sound good um it's gonna just sound really unnatural and weird i mean that is if you're going for an authentic transparent sound then you might as well just use nice samples so i've got an eq there um now i'm gonna slap on a drum bus and a limiter I'm also gonna throw on a Smexiscope. If you're not aware, this plugin is free. Uh, it is a waveform analyzer, visualizer, and uh, basically it's just kind of oscillating all the time. Um, you can make it so that it starts in the, the beginning, although it's kind of awkward when you do that because then you just get like a really narrow window. Let's see. Yeah. So I just keep it here. But it basically just shows you the waveform as it would appear if you had recorded it as audio in the timeline. So now I'm going to uh, pull this transients knob to the right in drum bus. And if you're not already aware, that reduces the uh, dynamics much in the same way that like sort of over compressing a sound would. Uh, and if you pull it to the left, then it increases the dynamics or kind of acts like an expander or a transient shaper. I'm actually gonna pull this to the right because I kind of want to hear the air in that room uh, because I'm gonna sort of use and abuse that to, uh, to give my drums character. And now I'm just gonna bring the ceiling down on this limiter a bit and just pay attention to the smexoscope also because you're just gonna, you're gonna see the dynamics just slowly uh, get squashed. But also in doing this, in reducing the dynamics, you also just inherently make it easier to mix down because there's nothing wrong with dynamics, obviously. Uh, this has nothing to do with whether or not dynamics are bad or good, but I think objectively speaking, the less dynamic a sound is um, or the less fluctuation in volume there is, the easier it's going to be to mix down because the easier it's gonna be for you to assess the average volume or loudness uh, and then make a decision on the mixer volume and go, hmm, how loud should I make this? Should I turn it down, should I turn it up? If it's consistent in its loudness and you know how loud it is, it's gonna be easier to mix down. So that's generally how I like to think about it. But now I'm gonna take this a step further. I'm gonna drag this drum bus here, uh, command click or control click and drag just to copy it. Now I'm gonna pull this back, so I'm gonna tighten it up again. But I'm gonna maybe even make this a little bit more. I'll just fricking totally squash these dynamics and then bring it back here, kind of just like a total inverse. And then I'll command and click and drag this limiter to copy it over here. Sounding a little, we're really hearing a lot of pumping going on, which like I could try and diagnose right now, but it's really not that big of a deal if you're really just trying to make, you know, a dope dusty drum beat. Um, and I would say that this is sounding like something I would use right off the bat. So I'm just going to freeze this and I'm going to flatten it. And now comes layering my drums. So I, if you can see how my stuff is set up, um, I've got my groupings as follows. I've got my bass group, my percussion group, 
And then in my percussion group, I have a kick and snare group and I have a brakes and hats group. In that group is my uh, drum brakes. Um, I don't know why I have two right now. Don't worry about it. Um, and then basically, uh, I usually have like one other group for like effects or everything that's not uh, percussion or bass. But my kick and snare group, sidechain, my brakes hats group, and my bass. Um, I left that in there for now. Also, not really sure why. It doesn't matter. But basically, uh, yeah, I'm, I do my kick and my snares in drum rack. Um, let's check it out. I'm just going to unsolo this. I'll turn down this uh, break sample a bit. Oop. And let's start. Uh, this is my template, so I'm just going to start finessing this. I do use ShaperBox to do my side training. I'll show that in just a second. I'm gonna just check out my master. I do have a limiter on right now. Oh, my snare is mighty quiet. Uh, like I said, I was planning on my drums in this tune and the rhythm and groove of them, among other things, to be at the mercy of this drum sample. So I'm going to just roughly see where everything is at. I'm going to make this snare one smaller, and then I'm gonna control click and drag this kick here. Maybe make it a little bit shorter. I'm gonna set my grid to adaptive, narrow, um, and then I'm just gonna move this around until, and you see these two little white dots, uh, it basically shows you where the midi clip note is at. Uh, now I'm just gonna drag this, zoom in a little further here, um, and if you don't know zooming, control and scrolling, and then alt and scrolling will zoom uh, vertically, and I think control scroll zooms horizontally, yeah. And then control alt click moves around like this. <clears throat> so I am just, uh, what I'm really just going to want to make sure is that I just get this, my kick hitting just before this kick, just so that I don't get any weird uh, clicking with the side chaining. Um, and then I'm going to control click and drag this to copy it over here. And I'll get another one over here. And one over here, roughly. Zoom in. Zoom in here. Yep, I'll get it happening just before that drum hit. And now I'm pretty sure it just does the same thing again. I'll just zoom in to double check. On this second half, I will make sure this one does seem a little different. Have it go right there, right here. Ba -ba, have this one go wah, wah, wah. Okay, that's totally fine. Cool. Nice. And you know what? This, psh, that is too. See, I don't like it to be too freaking zoomed in um, because then I usually will reference this where this kick is at for where I place almost everything else um, or where any of these kicks are at. Um, so I like for it to kind of be consistent to something that I can go off of when I'm trying to sort of see where to place things later. So let's see what this grid is on here. Yeah, um, I guess that's, yeah, uh, that works. That works. Let's check it out now. See, now what I would normally do also is maybe have some kind of a secondary kick too. Uh, and if you're wondering, I have this is doing all of my side chaining stuff, which I could probably just cover in a different video because it's a lot to go into. Um, basically, it's roughly what Copycat does. Uh, he's got some videos uploaded by some French dude on YouTube who could uh, <laughs> would go over exactly what this is. Uh, he uses ShaperBox also, although uh, I think the only difference is that I do a lot of um, multiband with ShaperBox. Oh, no, I think he does that too, actually. Um, but anyway, yeah, this MIDI note here is doing all the side chaining. Um, and that's basically so I can just have any other amount of kicks or snares that I want. So I'm going to control click and drag this. I'll name this kick two. 
And now on this kick, I'm just gonna um, maybe uh, make it a little shorter and then maybe even just like give it a little low shelf. A lot of the times that's what I'll do for like a secondary kick. Um, just change the timbre just a little bit, um, maybe even shorter than that. Oh yeah, and then sometimes I like to also give a secondary kick a little bit of a uh, fade in. Cause then it's almost like similar to like putting some like soft fabric on like the mallet of a kick drum. Uh, so now let's put that secondary kick on these kicks that occur really close together. So like here and here and here. And I'll make that a little bit more apparent. So now on this fade for this kick, which here, I'll name this kick two as well, and this kick two. Maybe I'll even just make this a low cut. No, I think I'm gonna go with a low shelf. I'm making it a little bit quieter too. Nice, sweet. I'll duplicate this too, because why not? Um, ba -ba. What's the level of my snare at? Yeah. That's generally the idea. I mean, here, let's just mute this drum sample and then just play my kick and snare by themselves. That's what most of my tunes would sound like if you just got rid of that layer. And now you could uh, make this a little bit more kind of believable just with some other layers. Um, I Here's my snare here, um, which I have a lot of processing on, which I'll go over another time. Um, but let's say I just want to add in like a top layer, which I totally recommend having some top layers for your snares and stuff at your disposal. Um, you could buy my sample pack. I've made like a bunch of them for that. That's like what I'm gonna use for this. It's a tackle box sample pack. I got like, I think I made over like 60 snare tops. Uh, actually, why don't I just go to it? Samples, snare samples, snare tops. It's just white noise basically with some effects going on there. Uh, I might not use this one, but I'm gonna just set this to one shot. I'm gonna turn off the filters, LFO, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna do a little bit of a fade in here because I don't want it to be fighting for that transient space um, with my kick and snare. It's the same reason why I removed so much of the dynamics from the drum break sample because I my all the transient information I really need for my percussion in this case right now um, without it at, you know not considering adding any like fills in yet or anything like that. Um, is for my kick and snare. I want those to be the punchy things. And it's kind of awkward and weird and uh, generally a bad idea to be sort of having more than one transient thing happening at any given time. So for tops and things like that, a lot of, a lot of the times I will do a little fade. And I'll turn this down a little bit, maybe fade it out also a bit. And this might be not what I'm looking for, but one thing I also like to do is just change the starting position. Let's see. I do wish you could do like a little, a different fade from this. It's kind of limiting with that, how it is, but I'm not too worried about it right now. Um, and then, yeah, if you're really trying to get kooky, I'm going to add, add in uh, another drum rack here. Boom, boom, boom. Drum rack. And I'm going to just control F, I don't know, tambourine, tamb.
There we go. <laughs> and now same thing here. I'm going to want to reduce these dynamics too because I don't give a shit about the transients or, or anything re resembling a transient in something like this because transient stuff for high-end, nobody really wants or needs. You don't want some high-end attack just molesting your ears. Uh, it's really invasive. That's the type of stuff that will subconsciously scare somebody off of the dance floor like they're going to be on the dance floor they're going to hear some really sharp transient high-end stuff they're not going to necessarily realize uh, you know break down what you did wrong as a producer but they're going to know something's wrong they're going to hate it it's going to hurt they're going to when something's loud enough and spooky enough and dynamic enough and unpredictable and how loud it is that it literally triggers involuntary blinking when something's that loud that's like when you know it's not good and uh, yeah, I've left dance floors because of it. And I'm sure that people have left my dance floor when I was playing because of me not considering stuff like this. So I am I can either do one of two things or both. I can do a little fade in here or I can just lower the ceiling or raise the gain on a limiter until I start to see a little bit of gain reduction as represented by that orange that starts to duck down in here. And I'll, let's see. I can maybe just have this hit whenever the snare hits or I can do it. Um, you know, every time. Oh, maybe I'll actually do this instead of that top. Boom, boom, boom. I like that. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to reduce the ceiling. Maybe I'll increase the gain, too, until I actually start to see some... There we go. Let's look at it, too, in Smexiscope. Let's turn off the limiter now. See, it's just a little more, uh, it's just a little bit more dynamic without the limiter on. Turn it on. Now it's really just serving its purpose as a layer. It's not fighting for any transient space. It's not gonna be spooking anybody. I'm going to just duplicate these. And that's basically the idea. You just, it's a nice, authentic sounding uh, drum break that I just sort of beefed up with my own kick and snare. And yeah, you could totally add in fills or do whatever else to make this sound more interesting. I'll probably expand more on this idea, maybe with even with this particular project uh, in another video, but I honestly have no idea. But yeah, check out my SoundCloud, Bandcamp, Gumroad, Patreon, all that stuff. Um, it really helps me. Literally, I survive off it. Um, and yeah, I appreciate each and every one of you. I also do lessons, mixed downs, mastering, whatever. So just hit me up. My email is all in the description. Um, KyotaUS at gmail.com if you're looking to reach me directly for anything. But uh, thank you for watching. Show you guys, show you gals, and show you they, them pals. Share it around. Spread the disease. Peace out.